And now you're making them move. And also you're making them live in communal space with strangers and in a bedroom with strangers. No way. You've got to be crazy. In the United States right now, there are 76 million baby boomers. The number one dilemma for these baby boomers, housing. That dilemma can be your opportunity. Welcome to the Assisted Living Network podcast, where you can discover how just one residential assisted living home could secure your financial future forever. Hey, it's Isabel from the Assisted Living Network. Do you want to share a bedroom with a stranger? Not me. Most seniors in a residential assisted living home are not going to want to share a bedroom, maybe a bathroom, but not a bedroom with a stranger that they just met, especially when they don't even want to move into a residential assisted living home for starters. Now you're going to make them share? No, thank you. 90% of seniors want to stay in their own home. And now you're making them move. And also you're making them live in communal space with strangers and in a bedroom with strangers. No way. You've got to be crazy. Okay. If you're thinking about getting into this business, you really need to consider what do the residents need and what do they want and what do the families need and want. And let me tell you, privacy is key. I know this from experience. Sharing is not for socialization, it's for a spend down option. It can save the family money, but it also makes you less money. If you think seniors, oh, they're going to want to socialize, they're going to want to live with their friends. No, they're not. Okay. Sharing is a way to get more residents into the physical home, but your cost increases with each resident. You need more food, staff, electricity, cable, you name it. There's some form of a bottom line of what is needed for each person in your property. So just because you have more residents crammed into one small home does not mean you're making more. Does that make sense? There are costs that are the same across the board, like activities. If you're paying an activities person to come in and play music, it's the same if you have 16 residents versus six residents. Caregivers are one of your highest expenses, 40% of your total expenses, and you're going to need more caregivers for 16 residents than six residents. But if they're sharing bedrooms, again, you're making less, but you're still paying more. You are the one who loses out. The math has to be math. And this is so important because we're not encouraging you to just make it work with a tiny home or a small 1,500 square foot, three bed, two bath home. No, 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 no. If you want to do this, do it right or don't do it at all. Okay. Have 10 to 20% of your bedrooms as shared options. They could also be big master suites. But if you are allowed to be licensed for 10, this would mean one to two of your bedrooms could be shared spaces. This gives options. Also consider what is commonplace in the local market. If you've done your research and all of the care homes around you have shared bedrooms and no one has private bedrooms, this may be normal in your market and you can get away with it. But don't you want to be the best of the best? Don't you want to have something that sets you apart? Privacy could be that thing, especially because we know it's what daughter Judy and what the senior themselves is looking for. Shared bathrooms, that's more acceptable and people are willing to do that. It still may impact your bottom line, but not nearly as much as private bedrooms would. If you're thinking, can I make this work with a 1500 square foot home that's three bed, two bath? Even if you can, right? Squeeze eight residents into that home. I highly suggest that you don't. We're here on a mission to positively impact 10 million seniors by providing high quality residential care for these seniors in a home environment. I encourage you to join us on that call, on that mission, because we really want to change this industry from the inside out. We're not trying to shove them all in the barn and just set them out to pasture. No, We want beautiful luxury homes that you would be proud to put your loved one in. The bottom line matters for you and for that senior. Yes, they may be paying less to live in your home, but if you can't afford the quality care that they are paying for, then you're not doing right by them. So make sure that your numbers work, but don't try to just squeeze by. 
Don't try to just make this happen with something you already have. Get a property that actually works for this. Sharing may be caring, but it's not caring for you and it's not caring for the bottom line. So do what's right for everyone and make sure to have as many private bedrooms and private bathrooms as you can. Don't forget to like and share this episode wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks for listening to the Assisted Living Network.